Okay, we're recording yeah. now. Hi guys, uh, welcome to the uh, weekly PyScript community call. And uh, for today, um, we have some announcements. I guess the first announcement is by Andrea. So. Oh. Yes. Um, it's. Uh, share my screen just for the sake of it. Um, it's going to be. So. There was a module on NPM called JS Proxy. It was doing absolutely nothing related to proxies in JS. So I contacted the owner of this module, who's been a super uh, friendly uh, person, who told me, yeah, it was an old idea, and it was borderline name squatting and, and, and an idea that made sense at the time. So, um, we have, I, or, or at least this namespace, this JS proxy, I have ideas behind, and I will propose these ideas to both Iodide and um, MicroPython. The reason being, and I can't stop sharing because there's nothing actually, there's no code to share at all. Uh, the reason being is that every it's not just about Pyodide or MicroPython. Every WASM targeting runtime is doing pretty much the same. So they all end up providing to the JS world a proxy of what they do behind the scene. And I thought, okay, all these times have this exact same model constraints and everything. They have to uh, interact with pointers eventually, or either numbers, list, dictionary, it doesn't matter. So they all do the same, but in MicroPython, there is a half-baked proxy. In PyDite, there is an almost full-baked proxy. In Ruby, there is a almost full-baked proxy, but they are all implementing the same wheel. So I thought, okay, maybe without uh, spending too much on it, I, I, I will eventually just land in there JS proxy that uh, makes sense for all the WASM targeting things because what they are missing is the fact that there is a finalization registry, for instance, on the JS side. So they can have all the proxy traps and that also they can be notified when a reference on the JS side is gone. And so I think this is was this was step zero to to have um, a way to to make all these interpreters speak the same language because if they all implement the same thing, they I don't want to talk about uh, bundle sites, but they are all it's not just dry. They are all doing the same because they want um, dictionary expose a JS proxy and they want to do the right thing when stuff in JS changes, it should be reflected and stuff like that. And I think if they had a better primitive, and that primitive can be shared across runtimes, um, at least 70% of expectations from user writing code and, and thinking, OK, this goes to JS, what happens next uh, is solved. Um, and so that's it. It's a, I know it's a silly announcement, but at the same time, it's a great, I think it's probably the best name to have uh, an NPM module that finds how WASM to JS or any grammar language to JS interact with the JS side. Um, and also because maybe uh, these uh, WASM targeting programming programmers, they don't know full JS capabilities or they don't think something is possible. So, if there is a module that says, hey, you just define your uh, deconstruct or destroy trap on a proxy, um, you can either reference count minus one, or you can either destroy the object on your side, and all this kind of stuff that I think is pretty common in all the uh, recent 
uh, Wasm development. And so that's it. It's a tiny announcement. There is a namespace that we can play with, and we I think we have a great product to demonstrate that this namespace can work and can help um, uh, Wasm targeting runtimes. And that's it. If you have any any anything against it, uh, it's not that I'm 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 working on it. It's just I think that namespace makes sense, and it has potentials. That's it. Yeah, I was going to say, don't downplay it. It's I think it's a great thing. That's something that we like potentially having that a common layer for interpreters in general is something that was a frequent. <laughs> It was one of the main things that Antonio and I disagreed um, on trying to also make interpreters talk to each other and, and, and whatnot. So this is great news. Love love it. Um, yeah. That's it. Madhur. Yeah. So we made some progress on, you know, integrating the assistant back into PyScript.com. Oh, you're driving. So. Also, as our next announcement. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so maybe um, I cannot show the demo, but maybe Martin can if it's, yeah, if it's ready. Would you like to see it? Step yeah, one. Yeah, have available, yes, yes. I have it available. Yeah, step one, find out how I share my screen with, oh, here we go. But what I was trying to say, I think you need to give some context. You know, the assistant is just. Um... <clears throat> yes. So, PyScript.com is obviously our place, uh, our go-to place for hosting and editing and working on your PyScript applications. For those of you that have never been there before, it's completely free. Go ahead, try it out, sign up. And we have um, um, currently not completely publicly available, but. Um, <laughs> we can make it available it is available to certain people right so but we have our ai assistant and so you can um when you're editing you can ask questions like this about pi script right so i can say what is pi script i have a little thing can it tell me you know um what's a good question oh it, like you, you, as you can see we've been asking it questions like can i use input um i don't know what what is pi what is pi config or what would I, what would I do? Um, how do I, let's ask it. How do I, I haven't tried this, by the way. How do I, um, import new packages in a Py script application? Well, not entirely correct, but anyway, <clears throat> that's the beauty of AI. There we have you. But yeah, so, that, so there you go. That's just showing that the, the, this is available. Now, now, the goal of this, this is just... Um, very, very we have it stand, st stood up and working. The goal of this is to start to train uh, the model from all of the PyScript applications that we've got. Currently, it's just using the docs and a couple of readmes. Um, and then actually have it kind of live updated as people add, and then actually be able to answer more sensible questions in in in, in PyScript. But yeah, so if it, head over to PyScript.com and have a play. Um, quick thing: the it's the it's available for founders that people that support it um, uses uh, the project at at the beginning. I, I don't think you can sign up as a founder anymore. Um, but yeah, it's probably going to be available soon as uh, one of the features um, for, for specific uh, tiers or stuff like this. Uh, anyway, it's, it is available now if you were a founder yeah. at the beginning it's, and you support. And this is the point where I usually then promise it to everybody, then we have to edit the video where I... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But I'm not going. See, see what I did. Thank you, Martin. 
This is great. <laughs> Pro progress. All right, that's it. Can I, can I ask a question? Of course. Yeah. Or a comment. It looks like compiled for PyScript.com, which is awesome. <laughs> and so yeah. I, I really yeah. loved it. And uh, yeah, I, I think he has great potentials and he will surely help for one. So thanks. No worries. Yeah. It, it has its, its, we need to do work to get it, you know, as useful as compiler. But yeah, I think that's pretty much the intention. Um, uh, another thank thing, uh, we should probably announce the latest release too. I don't think we did. Or did we? Uh, we oh, announced wow. it everywhere where we usually do. Right, in this meeting, I'm saying. <laughs> well, you've just announced it by saying perhaps we should announce it. So, so we've had a meta announcement. <laughs> yeah, I'm mainly asking because I was off when we did last week, so I, I wasn't sure. So, yes, new release. Hey, announced. Uh, any more announcements? What is what is just what is that release number twenty twenty four dot two dot one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if there are no more announcements, we can proceed to some agenda items, and I guess there is only one. Uh, by Andre again. Yeah. So because we talked about it, maybe. <clears throat> and we are recording, maybe it's worth sharing <laughs> the the few points that are kind of important for the release. Um, one breaking change, uh, probably whoever is using PyScript never cared, but um, behind the scene we have this PolyScript layer. Um, we removed Ruby support just because um, not Honestly, just because right now we cannot guarantee that we we run the latest Ruby project in WASM support because the way they publish stuff is not fully compatible with the way we run things. So we run things on standards, and ECMAScript modules are a primitive of these standards. Um, and right now, it's not clear where to fetch Ruby, where to fetch the uh, WebAssembly related stuff. And we decided that it's not in a good shape. So it's, um, yeah, we, it, it's, it's not uh, never coming back. It's just uh, right now, I feel like Ruby was experimental anyway. And so right now we, we decided to drop it. Um, the improved error reporting line is probably interesting for users because before we were pre-injecting um, our own um, um, standard library and the standard library can grow in time and can be even one line, whatever it does, as pre-injected code that has to be interpreted, the, the error line was always off by the standard library. So it doesn't matter, it was one line, 28 if you read and uh, your, your first mistake uh, that you write in is at line one uh, you will read something like error at line 28 and if if your coding is like what is line 28 i just wrote one line so that was um both a good call and personally i have to apologize because i never thought about it but it makes perfect sense and um at, at the same time when the code is evaluated, what can we do? So right now the code from users is evaluated apart because that guarantees that the line, the error reporting line is correct. Um, another uh, thing that it was not edge case or edge usage, um, but still made sense. So the, uh, in some case, so the beauty of uh, workers 
in our product is that you can invoke anything you want and don't care about the int. And mostly everything you want is going to act synchronously. But there is the other way around, which is interesting too and very powerful. So we expose from a worker all the Python capabilities into the JS world or into, if, if you have MicroPython on the main and PyDyd on the, on the worker, um, many other things that maybe you know that is going to be asynchronous and that's okay. So we enabled a flag that is called sync main only. And so from the main thread, if you create a worker in the JavaScript world and you know that it's going to be asynchronous because it's going to be executed on the, on the worker side, it's fine. And so before we were throwing errors for, for reasons, but right now we can, we can actually work around missing shared array buffer because you can have your main thread asking to the worker without needing share uh, the buffer um, things from the from the interpreter and that now works which enables um, a new level of capabilities because right now you can actually or, or maybe it's targeting um, more developers because right now you can say hey this stuff is cool in python how about i run all this stuff on the worker which is a good use case, and um, and when stuff comes back, I react or I show uh, results on the main, um, and that was sync main only. So you can define your methods on the on the main thread, and when you invoke those methods, you're sure that those go through the worker dance, and any result comes back asynchronously, and that's fine, and it doesn't need uh, atomics or any extra complicated technology that we are using and that requires special headers. So that should be good news too. Um, last but not least, we solved UTF-8 related issues because we, we were writing and assuming that the UTF-8 is as a, um, as a chart set is a is all over the place, but that's not necessarily the case. The case, so because all we know is that explicit is better than implicit. Right now, we are explicitly saying whatever we 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 provide as a file, and it has to be fetched or anything else is going to be stored as a UTF-8, and that's a um, that was already present in PyScript Classic, and that's also something I should have thought about before. But uh, yeah, that was a minor yet great um, fix. So the release doesn't break much except for Ruby support and it enables more for other cases that we, we've been asked or, or users asked during these days. Um, any question about this? Okay. Okay, Martin. Yeah. How do you spell sync main only? The flag. What's the spelling of it? I was just putting it in the note in the in the notes. You said sync main only. Is that a flag? I was going to say exactly the way you spelled it, uh, but it's s y n c underscore main underscore only. That was. Correct. Okay. Still, still Pythonic. Whenever I can, I try yeah. to, to, to respect that convention. And I, I, I have another kind of follow-on question for the idea of workers. Like, it feels to me that one kind of um, use case is to use a worker as a, as kind of like a, a server, right? So I can define a Python object and then say I want this Python object offered as a in a worker, right? So everything this Python object done is, is going to be done in a worker. I don't know, does that make any sense? That's just, it feels like how one of the things that I might want to do. I mean, like, okay, I've got this object and it's going to behave like an in-process server. I want to stick it in a worker and let it do its, but, but then it requires some kind of, you know, like server loop to go, hey, wait for someone to call the method. And then it, am, am I missing the point of how we might 
use workers in that sense, or is that even so, a sensible thing? The, the worker usage is almost um, transparent, uh, meaning that usually if you define utilities uh, in a worker that you want to call from the main thread, um, you, just, you just define those utilities and you do whatever you want in the worker code. And so you could have uh, whatever loop or whatever resource intense uh, thing that you want. And that's actually the best use case for a worker because the worker won't block the main thread, but you can ask <clears throat> the worker. I see. Right. And, uh, and it will eventually come back. Um, we have... Uh, uh, I see. Yeah, I, I, I think that was, I think that's just my lack of. I, I've not really played with them. It's just trying to get my head around the, the workers, how they work in the Python sets. But right. So if I if I load a Python module and I've just defined a bunch of functions in it, and I load that into the worker, then I can just call those functions, and it's and the magic happens, right? Yeah, that's the idea. Yes, but if you want to coordinate that magic on the main and you create explicitly on the main a worker and you wanna you you wanna be sure that when you from main you call that worker functionality arguments and you await for it returns whatever you're doing on the worker. And so you can you can have uh, an an entire API which is gonna be asynchronous from the main, uh, you can expose an entire API to the main thread. And that doesn't doesn't matter if it's MicroPython or JS or anything, but the contract is that worker can ask from main and wait for it. Main can ask from worker, and inevitably it has to be asynchronous. So right. this is the contract. This is the difference, mm -hmm. and it's not super simple to explain. But if you think about non-blocking, main cannot block. So you invoke something somewhere else. It doesn't matter if the worker blocks, whatever it does, if the worker is super heavy, if the worker is a while loop that never terminates, uh, which might be the case in some uh, terminal application or example. Um, and we have interrupts there, so you can control C or command C and, uh, and get out of it. But at the same time, the contract is there. So worker from main, you can do whatever you want. Main from worker is going to be asynchronous. And uh, this enables anything in worker from main without needing shared array buffer. Because once it's asynchronous, you don't need the atomics. You don't need the shared array buffer. You don't need the architecture that we have that is required in workers to invoke main and pretend that everything is synchronous like we do right now. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, perfect. Okay. Great. Um, where are we? Uh, oh, I think uh, it was about zip versus RGZ yeah. versus others versus, are we good? So the are we good is um is a question. The current state is that we have a merge request, uh, which is working fine, actually very very okay, and uh, at the same time is um it's creating some this uh, is not consistent let's say because Iodide has baked in ability to support um, a lot of a lot of compressors so RGZ is fine uh, zip is fine uh, there were others um, so the, the, the there is a more regular expression that says if this is this file is that kind of compression and you're targeting a folder slash star which means you want to unpack uh, implicitly, you want to unpack that thing not as a star file, but as a whatever the the, the original archive contains. Um, this works seamlessly in Pyodide. 
In MicroPython, it's not the case because there are not so many compressors baked in. So for JavaScript, I had to bring in my own compressor, um, and it's not mine, actually. It's, um, it's a module, it's called DeepJS, which is a third-party dependency. But uh, apparently, MicroPython wheels, packages, are targz. And so it has baked in a targz capability, and, um, and I want to enable both zip and targz. But there will be some inconsistency with the files that you can trash in your pyconfig or mpyconfig, and, and uh, not necessarily all of them can be, um, can be unpacked into into their uh, resulting folder. So my question here is, are we okay with enabling a bit more out of the box in Pyodide and a bit less because of capabilities in MicroPython? Or do we want to be sure that both Pyodide and MicroPython only understand zip and targz and everything else is like Yagni or you, you, you I mean, you, you can do better or you, and this, uh, this comes from users asking to package a, a whole directory and say, instead of writing thousand files, I just say, this is my entry point in my server, which is a zip. And I want that to be extracted anywhere else. And I want the Python code to be able to reach any of those folders, files and subfolders. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I think we we need to be comfortable with those differences because all of, we only have two interpreters now and they differ. As we grow, uh, we will have more and they will differ. You know, I think we should try and support the same features, but it's totally acceptable if something uh, is not supported out of the box and MicroPython right now for us to say this this option is not available with this interpreter and what I think we should do is is raise an error or something that for sure uh not blindly fail but yeah we'll not we'll never be able to support everything with all interpreters all the time so just one other mm -hmm. another thing in MicroPython, you mean we should fail with an error if the if the um, if the format or the extension is not understood by by MicroPython. so right now if i can um ah, where is it okay right now i'm in the wrong repository i think um let me try to show you okay can i share my screen again one more time yep. so Right now, these are all the extensions that Pyodide, and there is a URL which explains Unpack Archive. These are all the extensions that Pyodide can handle. Um, in our case, it's going to be just zip and our GZ, and probably actually. I don't know GZ, GZ tar. I don't know if it's the same of tar GZ. I need to investigate that. But will is handled automatically and probably shouldn't even be in here because we have packages for wheel dot wheel extensions. Um, so it's a matter of we enabling all BZ tar GZ tar wheel zip tar tar GZ. Um, as a valid entry for, for a file, because in um, MicroPython, instead, we just understand Z right now, because I haven't implemented the targz variant, but I wonder if this should be our, in terms of documentation and everything, is like, either is this or nothing. And, um, and also, the wheel, Apparently, in Pyodide are zip files, zip folders, and right. in MicroPython are um, targz files. So the wheel in here is, uh, for me, is uh, actually a strong no, because if you want a wheel, you 
probably want to define that thing as a package, not as a not as a not as a file. And as a user, I think if the request is uh, let's let's wrap a folder into a zip and trash it there and let the the rest of the virtual file system handle it. I think zip and targz probably are the only thing we need um, because one works for very well for um, any zip works everywhere. targz is pretty common in the Linux world. So this this is actually my point and my question. And uh, if you have any any feedback on this, um, I will take note. And uh, I think hopefully at least we agree that will. In a, as, a, as a file, it, it, it sounds weird because it, it's uh, actually a, a proper Python thing and not um, a file system concern. Yeah, I, I agree. We can just roll out the, the first two. Uh, honestly, I think <clears throat> um, rolling out the min, uh, like a minimum effort feature and support it and see if it's enough for users and, and whatnot. And then if we get requests, we can change or add more features later. Uh, I think it's a good approach also because honestly, we roll it, we roll it out as, as it is. And if someone wants to support another format, it doesn't, we, they can, they can also try and, and implement themselves. Right, like we should support that. If you if you want something that new and we we don't have bandwidth, feel free to to add to to contribute. You know, type of approach. Um, so basically, saying, I think it's totally good enough uh, right now, and we will learn as we release this and and go from there. Martin. Okay. So so, so to be sure I understand, if we mm -hmm. enable just zip and target Z, we're good, right? Yeah, I think so. My, my personal okay. opinion is, yeah. Both cover directories with files inside or eventually just a file or whatever. Okay, I agree with that. Thanks. Uh, Martin. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is um, going to be a common use case, right? But one of the things that we've started to just play around with is PyScript.com kind of hosting packages. <laughs> and so like when we've been, me as my workflow, one of the things that I do, if I've got a package uh, like the invent, say, um, then I actually just put all my invent files up on PyScript.com, but then it means I have my invent package there, and then I can just, I can actually access it from PyConfig and actually pull them into another PyScript app. The problem with that is, of course, right now is that I have to individually specify every single file in my config. And I did wonder whether this may be just be like a case we don't want to support because it's kind of PyScript.com specific, but could we have like a way where I could, I could tell you like, I can tell you a, a TOML file, which will then jump in. So, so, so the invent framework could actually have a manifest, like a little manifest, right? <laughs> so I only have to, so we basically use PyScript.com as a really lightweight way for publishing of packages for people. Now, I know it sounds a bit bonkers, but my thought about this is potentially in inside organizations, it's a really frictionless way for people to share packages. As opposed to, oh, I need to somehow get a package sent around to my IT group or whatever. I don't know. Just what you... Uh, this is a great use case. Instead of calling it packages, I would call it apps or something like this, because what you're doing is really you're using the other app assets and files, etc., to as your dependency, right? Like I understand the packaging, but it's a little different yeah. than the pack Python mm -hmm. package, right? Just just as it's oh, a big way. Kind of that, right? Because it like the way that I've been doing it on for my for the just to like get the demo one of the invent demos running is there's in I have an invent PyScript app but it's not an app like I just put like it doesn't have PyScript in it it just that the HTML file just says this is the invent framework right it doesn't include PyScript I'm literally using it just to serve my package mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah Andrea Andrea 
just to provide some background, his request about being able to upload zips was um, somehow my interpretation. It was a workaround for the config. So what I say is that I can write all the files, all the things, and put all of them in my server. But how about I just write a zip, and uh, right. from my from, from my Python side, I just invoke all the things that I need from that file, that, that thing. And, uh, and I think it somehow bundling um, and circumventing the uh, verbosity of the of the PyConfig. Um, to me, it kind of makes sense. I don't know how much of uh, all the use case it is, but I think uh, of course, once we enable something, everyone will abuse it in different ways. <laughs> but but uh, I think it makes sense because you, you don't want to spend too much time. It has to be simple, right? So you don't want to spend too much time in writing every single path, even if we have shortcuts in the definition, curly braces, folder, whatever, but with a zip, complex zip folder, mm -hmm. Or a folder in general, that that's just annoying, and uh, you probably don't want to deal with it. Um, I my two cents are gone. Yes, <laughs> uh, Fabio, please. Uh, yeah, plus yeah. one on keeping it simple. Um, I love your, I love the idea around your proposal, Martin. Martin, um, I think we need to sit down and think about the what what is there for the user right and what's the story like why and, and whatnot and then work on it I'm not that convinced that the the comma is the right answer but I yeah. totally see the use case yeah um, it might yeah, yeah. Like I said, my, my point is really just to enable like a lightweight sharing for people that don't want to don't know about PyPI or don't want to about like how do I bundle this? But like and Jay, yeah. I, totally right. The first step is the is the is the zip files, right? I can I can stick one zip up, then I can share yeah. it. Right? Then, then my I'm smell good. is honestly the smell I think is mm, that it's more this the answer is more out of PyScript rather than in PyScript itself. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. Like for instance, okay, a quick quick I out of my uh, brain, I'm feeling very uh, polite today. Uh, out of my a, a random idea could be, you know, if maybe it's something that a plugin or something like this that adds a flash zip feature where if you have specific files in your app, it just bundles a zip and serves from there, right? Like crazy thoughts or whatever. Uh, but it's not something that I think PyScript, PyScript doesn't need to support everything out of the box. That's what I'm trying to say, right? Like we have plugins for something. Uh, Fabian, I think, Fabian, you were next. <clears throat> I think um, if I understood correctly, I think that could be a feature for the PyScript.com CLI. You could pass maybe a extra yes. argument and then we are smart enough to actually Yes. do the right thing and add it to your Tomo file or Jamo config file or whatever. Because I'm not sure if you all seen, but uh, Valerio, many, many months ago, created a PR that was being a little bit smarter. And if you had any, and if you try to wrap a file, a Python file with imports, he will try to actually parse that and put it in uh, your config file. Well, by and at the time, so it's been it's been a while. Um, so I think we could maybe do something like that. Uh, I, I did open a PR on, on, on the create command and thanks Andrea for approving. Uh, and my goal is to kind of plug the work that Valeri did and implement it because I think it's a nice feature for PyScript, uh, CLI users, and then eventually release the two, the open source and the .com one. Yeah. Makes sense. Enjoy it. So um, <laughs> I kind of nuked the wheel extension uh, five minutes ago. And after this conversation, I realized that maybe <laughs> that's even 
solution instead of a, 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 of an issue. So that if we could package apps as a wheel that is not from um, MIP or MicroPIP, and, uh, and we, we, we share those wheel a file, maybe we have room, and that, that's actually a good thing right now to decide to break if it's not RGZ or ZIP. We break on wheel over anything else that it looks like a package because we can that, then after improve. And maybe the wheel as a, as a folder that is a ZIP and you just change the name as wheel, um, maybe that's probably a solution to the distributing applications somehow. But it's a wider and uh, uh, untouched topic so far. So I don't want to have any answer right now, but this is just maybe an idea. So how about when, when you're explicitly saying, I want to import this file and the file is uh, file.wheel and that, that's what you can import or use as an app. Maybe that's, that's good enough or simplified enough, but uh, I don't have even a strong opinion is just that I nuked the wheel and then at the end of the day all, all packages are wheels in Python. So uh, yeah, that, that's it for me. Yeah, I see the irony there, but what <laughs> would, the problem is I'm afraid, the only thing I'm afraid of is because of the different implementation, we may end up in, a, in the, in the Spider-Man meme situation pointing at each other uh, because you know, uh, I'd, I'd expect we'll see the easy files, right? I, the multiverse, exactly. You expect, you know, uh, a different person behind the mask, and then you and your cover is like, oh no. So basically, you have a wheel. Both uh, support wheels, but if you take a pyodide wheel and you bring it to a, a micro Python one, it bro it breaks, right? That's the thing that I would I'm afraid of. Uh, fair enough. It's a it's a fair point. I it was just probably my brain farting. <laughs> right no, now. no, it's good. <laughs> Especially when you get into those weeds, like it's really easy to, yeah, need a break. <laughs> you know? but, but it's uh, again, as long as we decide to break on any other known format for Pyodide, and we say this is not supported, we have a chance in the future to enable it whatever format it is to say, okay, this is a, this is a good app format or app uh, aggregation app bundle uh, that we can digest. And uh, I think that's cool. And maybe if we come up with a name sooner or later before I ship this uh, feature, uh, it's gonna be even better. Our own extension for shipping our own apps. Something like that. else from me i don't know if uh, there are other agenda items no but also it's not me driving so <laughs> i can show a thing it's going to be three seconds uh or three minutes um but i was a bit late so i can show it next week if you if you want to take 10 minutes depends on go for it i say so oh, yeah. I've showed before my cut fact uh, PR, right? Uh, this is a very in progress thing, but we now have a project level and local level data storage. Um, and you invoke it through this pyshop.com, similar to what I've shown in the past, and then you say projects.datastore contains something and then you can set things uh, you can grab things this data store acts like a dictionary so you can do all kind of dictionary like things from it the difference is um, if I run run this I already had a bunch of stuff because I was testing things and um, I do need to rethink how we are storing things in the in a database but this is now being stored in your project data store um, and just for being complete, 
this is like the, the local one, we'll put it in the local storage. So you can either import it from project import at the store and you don't have to type everything. The reason why we are supporting two ways is because we will offer accounts data storage, project level data storage and your local data storage. So then you can import it and you can do a mix match if you want to do a sort of mix match. Uh, and just to finish it off, then if I go to Postman, I have my cat fact, which is a stringified list. And then I have a bunch of other stuff that I was testing. So like I said, this is very, very early stages, but it's working. So yeah, <laughs> it's progress. <laughs> nice. Andre. Uh, the local storage, uh, is it reflected into the browser local storage or is it sync? Yeah, it, it's just a wrapper around the browser. Um, uh, local storage and uh, it still acts as a dictionary so you can think about the local data storage as a, your dictionary but it's storing things in your browser so two two main concerns for me mm -hmm. first one is that after five megabytes if i remember correctly the local storage just stopped working yes and the second one is that any Third-party library on the same domain and page and tab doing local storage dot clear will break everything. So this is uh, I, we are not calling uh, the local storage dot clear. I'm I'm deleting the no. thing itself. I'm saying any any other third-party JavaScript library. On oh, the sorry. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It has yeah. that. Yeah, but the the reason behind that that we we talked about it was. If, if you are, as an app writer, wants to store data for your users, you might want to say, um, I don't really want it in my database, so I'll put it in the user's local storage. And then if the user itself decides to remove his his storage, then it's, 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 it's up to him. He decided to clear cache and clear everything. So he loses whatever now, he was trying I, to say. I'm not worried about your implementation. I'm rather worried about Probably the documentation should state that yes, any malicious third-party code or not malicious necessarily, but any obtrusive third-party code does something like local yeah. storage or clear. Yeah. Uh, your expectations might vary, <laughs> and, uh, and that's something to be concerned about um, because local storage is a uh, is is cool, but is very limited and it's a uh, kind of legacy that we have and uh, many relies on but because many relies on especially third parties um the 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 dot clear was a mistake i think in the api because it affects every everything else and so if it, in terms of documentation i hope there will be a note like be aware if if some library or you in dev to write local source dot clear stuff might break and uh yeah. Sure, not 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 breaking things are are in there or or not untrusted libraries. That's it. Yeah, I have an implementation okay. question. Do you think it would be better to use the um, uh, browser database similar to what uh, IceCube does? DB. The index DB has no clear. So yes, but it's inevitably asynchronous. So index DB is not a replacement for local storage because every Everything you showed should have an await before if you're yep. main. And it can work only from workers if you're not on main. So IndexDB is safer from that point of view because, well, well, not necessarily, but you open a name DB. And um, unfortunately, local storage, I, I, I wrote a module once upon a time that was about disaggregating like uh, any registry. So you open your local storage space with your name, you with your own name. So anyone writing clear would not affect the local storage in your name. And uh, I can propose uh, ugly fixes to this 
API, but that will be obtrusive for the rest of the web. So I'm not doing that right now, but we can discuss this separately. But um, definitely IndexedDB is, is, is the better storage for the web, but it's always asynchronous. So that's, yeah. that's the bummer. That's good, then. Thank you. Well, if we don't have any more announcements or agenda items, then we can wrap it up.